Are you thinking about switching to Linux but worried about making silly mistakes? Maybe you've tried before and hit a wall. Don't worry, you're in the right place. Join me as we take a look at what not to do when making the switch away from Windows or Mac OS to Linux. The number one common mistake is expecting Linux to be Windows. Okay, obviously you know it's not Windows. But seriously, people expect to be able to install Linux and just have it work exactly like a Windows install. People falling into this trap might think that Linux just looks a bit different when you switch on your computer, and that all of their normal Windows experience applies. While it is true that Linux can be really easy to use with a friendly graphical interface, expecting your new OS to operate in exactly the same way that Windows does, say going to a website and downloading and running an .exe file, or running a program that was never developed for Linux, is a mistake. Linux is not Windows, it's fundamentally different. Number two is only exploring one distro. I was actually guilty of this myself. When I first got into Linux, I started with Mint and never tried anything else. This is a trap, and by arbitrarily sticking with one distro, you risk not running a system that's more suited to your needs, or even one you just like a bit better. Distros all have pros and cons, and they ship with different software and technologies. And not all Linux distros will suit your needs or likes. What gave me the push was buying a new laptop, the ThinkPad Z13 Gen 2. I immediately rushed to install Linux Mint, and it was just not happy. After days of troubleshooting to no avail, I decided to try Fedora, and I'm so happy I did. On this hardware, Fedora 41 worked perfectly out of the box. No tinkering needed at all, I could just use it. Mint on the other hand was not suitable thanks to its outdated kernel and lack of modern AMD drivers. It also uses X11 instead of the more modern Wayland. I do use Mint on my main gaming desktop, and I'm very happy with it on there. It just didn't work on the laptop. So, if you've just installed a Linux distro and it's not playing nicely with your hardware, or even just your personal preferences, try something else. Number three, skipping troubleshooting basics. I get it, it can be overwhelming, but I've never seen an issue on Linux so complicated that it can't be fixed. What I do see though, is many new users who face a simple issue and then immediately go from zero to 100 or zero to Linux sucks. When in reality, the fix is just a Google search away and once it's applied, it's set forever and you can forget about it. When an issue arises, don't assume the worst. Here's what I recommend, Google it. Usually you'll find your answer there. If not, my hot tip is actually to use the free version of ChatGPT to diagnose the issue. It's really great at stepping you through the troubleshooting process. You can describe what's going on, or even copy and paste terminal text. For some of the more advanced issues I've faced, ChatGPT is really impressive in getting them resolved. But if you can just remember one thing, it's that help is available. You don't just have to sit there and glare at your screen when a minor issue presents itself. Before we move on to the next points, do you want to win up to $500 in cash? Well, you'll need to get your creative hat on, because $500 plus a $300 PCBWay coupon is the grand prize for the 11th badge design contest that PCBWay, this video's sponsor, are hosting. PCBWay are a one-stop shop for CNC machining, PCB prototypes, 3D printing, and more. And their 11th badge design contest is all about celebrating innovation. So, if you're feeling creative, follow the link in the video description for the chance to win some great cash and coupon prizes. Submissions close on the 30th of April, and thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Number 4. Not doing enough research. This one ties into basically every point on this list. Falling into this trap ensures that you'll have a miserable time switching to Linux. Even if you do the smart thing and back up your files, immediately deleting Windows and installing Linux without learning a couple of easy concepts like disk partitioning or live USBs, or even not bothering to see whether your hardware and software will be compatible, is a horrible idea. Do some research, give yourself the best chance of enjoying a smooth transition. It's as easy as a Google search and there are not many mysteries there. Double check that the software you want to run works on Linux and if not, what the alternatives are. Check that your hardware, including your graphics card, plays nicely with the Linux distro you want to install. Save yourself the grief. And finally, we have number five, and that is giving up too soon. So many people face one setback and immediately panic. 
Just remember, help is at hand. Visit the community forums, watch some YouTube videos, and Google your questions. If you've done your research, switching to Linux should be easy and your experience should be good. The default Linux experience tends to involve a fresh install, a couple of days of fixing minor issues, and then set and forget. It really should be something you can just set up and then have work well for good. If things aren't working, try something else, whether that's another distro or troubleshooting. Help is out there, you've just got to be proactive. But once you've got your Linux install set up properly, trust me when I say it is so worth it. Many issues you've had with Windows just melt away, and you're left with a clean operating system that's set up to your liking. That's all for today folks, thanks for watching the video, and I hope you found it helpful. If you want to support me, feel free to check out my Ko-fi page, or check our Discord server to chat with like-minded people. Catch you in the next one.